Ladies and gentlemen, I always like doing this. Uh, Lake Oswego, uh, Oregon is a place I am not totally familiar with, but it's right next to Portland, which I am totally familiar with. I've been. Why through, are you familiar with Portland? Well, I've been through there a few times. You know, okay. <laughs> it, it's uh, Portland is the stop on the way to Seattle. Right. <laughs> yes. It's a pretty nice town, though. This is I mean, this pretty. By, by the way, this is Ronnie Bennett. Let me just say that. So, you know. And if you're wondering why she has the same last name I do, it's because we used to be married. Right. Uh, used to be. A long time ago. You, you figured it out to be how long ago? Well, we've known each other for 60 years. And we <laughs> broke up in 1971. 60. I mean, I met you at 18. Yeah, that's about right. Mm -hmm. That's about right. Uh, you, uh, we, you were at a place called the Old Town Coffee House. Right. And I pulled up in a car. I can't remember who was driving it at the time. You probably maybe remember. I don't. Uh, <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> and he said, I want to pick up my friend Ronnie. So I went, okay. Where were we going? Yeah, yeah, huh? Where were we going? I had no, I have no idea. But he wanted to pick up his friend Ronnie. So you got in the back seat of the car, and I assumed that Ronnie was a guy. Oh, and you couldn't tell by looking. And I couldn't tell in the dark because you were kind of a tomboy at the time, and you you know you weren't all gussied up and stuff. And and then I looked over, you know, oh, it's a woman. Oh, hi, hi, Ronnie. You know, and I got, of course, my whole demeanor changed. <laughs> and that's how we met. You know, you remember more than I do. And you had an apartment right next door to the Old Town Coffee House. Well, three doors down. Three, was it three doors down? I thought it was right next door. No, three doors down. And I worked there part-time on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. So. It's a waitress. Yeah, yeah. Long time ago, folks. Yes, it was. Back when dinosaurs ruled the earth. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I was talking to somebody. I was talking to Will Durst uh, just before we did this thing today, although they play on two separate days. Uh, about the fact that when I was younger, you know, we talk about, about how bad things are now. They were pretty bad back then with the McCarthy hearings and all that crap that was going on. You know, it was pretty, it was Salem witch trial time. <laughs> not quite, not quite. It was, well, no, I mean, the McCarthy, the McCarthy era was pretty awful. Maybe it was the first awful political uh, event in our lifetime, in our, our adult life, lifetime, our anyway. Lifetime, yeah, yeah. The, you know, we've had them before. I mean, it, it's not like, it, it, folks. This may not be the worst, but it's close to it. Okay. Now. Yeah. Well, I, what I like to say I don't, is, I don't think you can. I think it must have been a terrible time, leading up to and during the Civil War. I mean, so long ago, there's well, nobody around to talk about having been there, but yeah. Um, I, I don't think I, th I think that must have been a terrible time in the United States, and certainly the Depression. Yeah, yeah. But I I, I like to say uh, that uh, you know um, compared to Trump, Bush isn't looking that bad. <laughs> and, and I said, come terrible? to think of it, compared <laughs> compared compared to first Daddy Bush, Trump isn't that bad. In fact, compared to Nixon. Uh, 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 Careful there. Uh, Nick, I don't know. Maybe we should just skip comparison. Wait a minute. Nixon isn't that bad. And then I go even further by saying that compared to Hitler. <laughs> now, now, now. You Hitler know about that rule. That bad, bad. Uh, what do you think about Khashoggi? Uh, uh, well, I think he's dead. Uh, well, I don't mean that, of course. Yeah, I think he's been chopped I think up in the political into situation and what our leaders are doing about it. You know, uh, I, it, it, the, the question he brings up is, do I put people of Boeing out of work? Uh, and I think, have you read deeper than that? Huh? Well, 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 that's not really that's not really the only other choice. Uh, right, right. But I mean, I don't. Uh, I I think we should cut out the arms deal. I think we should just penalize. It, it may not penalize them terribly because they'll go somewhere else and make a deal. But we shouldn't be doing business with them for moral purposes, for moral reasons. Let me see if I can say this right. I'm sure you can. I'm not so sure that in that now infamous interview on Sunday on 60 Minutes with yeah. Leslie Stahl yeah. and the president, 
uh, when he was asked about Christine Blasey Ford and what he said about her after the awful things he said about her, he said, oh, it doesn't matter because we won. I think that's all you have to know about this man and what he stands for. That's, and it's the same thing as worrying about selling the arms and getting X billion of dollars, which we wouldn't anyway, but then he doesn't know that because he doesn't know a lot of things. But uh, do you need to know anything else than those two things to know what a monster the man is? Oh, no, I, believe me, you don't have to sell me on that one, you know. I mean, I just, uh, I can't believe that we have this man as president, that, that America came to this, you know. Uh, and and it's it's kind of sad. It's very sad. It uh, goes without, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, it's terrible. It's just terrible. That's all there is to it. Yes. Um, so anyway, you got some things you want to talk about? <laughs> Well, there's been an event since we did this last. Yeah, yeah. Um, which we've already discussed. I'm not going to pretend otherwise that so people watching knows that this is not the first time. <laughs> we've talked about uh, it, right. Shall, uh, I, shall I act shocked when you say it? <laughs> you're right. <laughs> um, is that you know, most people who've watched this or read my blog know that about 16 months ago, I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and had the Whipple surgery, which is, it, God, is that an awful surgery. It takes forever to recover. But after several months of recovery, a uh, test showed me what the doctor said to be cancer-free. And so it's been. And then this last week, a week ago, a new CAT scan showed that the cancer's back in a lung and in my peritoneum, whoever heard of that? Whoever gets to say peritoneum? Did you in look their it life? up to see where it is? And, and, well, I think it's somewhere in your abdomen. You know, I haven't looked it up. <laughs> but, uh, but the difference between the last time is that this is really not treatable beyond, if I wanted some chemotherapy that will. It won't. It, it can't kill the cancer, but it can slow the growth so that I have more healthy time until the end comes. So that's not the most wonderful news anybody ever had, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Um, said that the reason I do it, I know if you have to know this, is that ever since the surgery last year, my nose just gushes for no good reason uh, yeah. now and then. And I mentioned it to a nurse. Uh, at, at the center where I go for all my treatment, she said, lots of, of surgery patients say that afterwards. <laughs> Nobody warned me. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm laughing to hear about something else. That's not very funny. Um, but I'm 77 years old. That's a good lifetime. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm not, and, I mean, the awful irony, and I wrote this on the blog this week, the terrible irony for the moment is that I feel as healthy right now as I have at the healthiest times of my life. The only thing different from before the surgery for me mm -hmm. is that my stamina is down and my energy is down. And even without these secondary cancers, I don't think they would ever have come up very much further than they are now. But in general, I am really feeling healthy. And so that makes this very hard to believe. I mean, yeah. I believe it. I know they're right. I'm going for appointments I need, at palliative care and other things. Um, and making the decision about the chemotherapy and so on. But I think I don't really believe, I think I don't know it yet. There, there's a funny balance there in the middle of, because I feel so good. Well, if you were so if, if you were sudden, And then yeah. I know it's true and I feel there's this heaviness and that doesn't mean I don't have fun laughing with people and do everything that I do in life every day. But there's a little heaviness that's settled on me. Um, but what, well, what happens is, I, I know this is probably with the case, you wake up in the morning, you open your eyes, say it's another bright, shiny day. Oh, my God, I'm still dying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. But you know something, I, I, I could say... So far, I don't remember any dreams that relate to this either. In a less lethal way, I could say the same thing. You know, I'm 78 years old, I wake up in the morning and go, oh my God, I'm dying. You know, I mean, 
Uh, well, the difference between the, you know, the, that old saying that we're all dying from the moment we're born, the difference between that and where I am right now is that, although it can't be exact, there is a time limit. Yeah. I know, the, the, the difference being I know the time limit. Yeah. Which you don't, and I didn't before this week. And so you can pretend, I mean, I'm 77. After I started feeling so good after recovering from the surgery and having the no current cancer, you know, the doctors telling me that, is that I could pretend I was going to be here for another 20 years. You know? Yeah. Yeah, well. Um, and now I can't. Mm. Well, and, now, uh, you know, I when, when you told me this the other day, uh, it, uh, it boy, you that light in the back. You kind of your face is kind of dark today, but it's okay. We can see you, so don't worry okay. about that. Uh, Maybe I, when when we, when you first forward a little bit, yeah, well, that shine it in your face or something. But anyway, don't you don't have to. Uh, when you told me this the other day, uh, there were all kinds of different emotions that went through me for mm, the next. 20, tell me for the next. 24, 48 hours. I mean, uh, one of which was, you know, we were married. So mm -hmm. in a way that makes you family, you know, yes. no, no matter, I mean, if I had never made friends with you again and we had never talked again, then I guess I wouldn't have to be dealing with this right <coughs> now. But, but fortunately we did. And um, we've had many very good years of, of uh, being friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, but because of that closeness, uh, I'm especially, I was especially hit by this. Uh, and also, I mean, there's my own fear of death, my own fear of mortality that plays into this, but, uh, that would be a very selfish motive. Uh, doesn't mean be, just, just because we can label something like that doesn't mean it isn't real that you don't feel it. Right. Exactly. No. And so, uh, I was kind of feeling you know, I was putting myself in your position and so on. Uh, and uh, all things considered, you're taking it very well. Well, uh, I, as yeah. I said, I don't think I truly believe it yet. I, and I'm so damned healthy. There's not a twinge of pain are you, are you in the Are you in the denial phase? They say there's denial, acceptance, blah, blah, blah. blah. But, um, and I'm not going to, you know, I've read that stuff a lot over the years, and particularly a lot about dying in the... 15 years I've been doing that blog about what it's really like to get old. And, of course, this is part of it. This is well, uh, Cancer is one of the diseases of age um, that more old people get than people of younger ages. And did you know, by well, the way? I, mean, I wake up, look, I wake, every time I feel an ache or a pain, I say, is this what's going to get me? You know, I, I feel that at this point, my, this point in my life, there is a natural force that it's pointing its finger at me and saying, not yet, but soon, you mm, know, that's not right. yet, but soon. Yeah. And, uh, and I keep waiting for what that thing is going to be that's going to get me. And uh, so far... He died it, of, and no, I, see, I can say that. Yeah. I, she died of cancer. You can't say anything like that yet. Well, you know, you've got an advantage here. Like, you don't have to worry about gaining... If you gain some weight, you don't have to worry about it. Oh, wait a minute. There's you know? more than that. Yeah. Um, for some reason, you know, all during the post-surgery and months after that, uh, or, and before that, too, I was losing weight like crazy after a lifetime of taking off the same 10 or 12 pounds over and over again and when i talked to the oncology nurse about it way back she said that cancer and chemotherapy eat up energy faster than a healthy body so your body's using up more calories eat 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 she kept telling me eat 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 and um and she said you know she wanted me eating all this fat and all this protein that i hadn't been eating before and I said, I don't really do that anymore. She said, you'd better because the cancer will kill you long before the diet will. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I'd been eating, 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 eating. And then after that kind of began to smooth out and I could go back to my old way of eating. Um, and then I realized in the last two months, I've gained 10 or 12 pounds, which I really understand. I spent a lifetime living that way with the same 10 or 12 pounds going on and off all the time. So when we had the meeting last week to discuss what's happened um, and that, that the chemotherapy can perhaps extend 
my healthy or feeling healthy life for longer than without it. Um, she said that, um, that again, I'll have the problem during that time of losing too much weight. And I told her that I just gained this weight. She said, good, you've got a buffer. You're going to need it. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, um, as I say, it, it, you know, it hit me, uh, profoundly and, uh, um, it, 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 you know, it, it, what it also presents to a person that isn't you is how to handle it, how to react to it, how to respond to I it. I worry how to, about that. How to beat. I worry how, about yeah. because I'm not going to keep it a secret. I'll, I'm not going to go out and, and carry a sign around, but I'm not going to keep it a secret when it comes up appropriately. And I worry about people don't know ever know what to say. And so I have to figure out, and I'm working on it, figure out how to make it okay for people to know this. Yeah. Make it not uncomfortable anyway for them. Right. And I haven't quite gotten there yet, but I'm working on it. Well, uh, you know, I mean, uh, your, your demeanor, I think, probably does more than anything. But it's still, you're, it's still very difficult for people to know what to say or what to do. You know, I mean, uh, this kind of diagnosis not only affects you, and of course, it ultimately affects you, but it does affect the people around you as well. You know, uh, we get and to laugh. By the way, all of us, huh? We get to laugh through this too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Now, here's the thing: you have spent uh, how many years now with this blog? Fifteen years. With what? The blog? Yeah. Fifteen years. Fifteen years, and it's been what it's like to get old. And this and, is part of it. And now you're writing about this. And this is part of what it's like to get old. I mean, and uh, long after you're gone, and I hope that is longer than we believe. Uh, mm, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, uh, what you've written, which will probably stay up there, will be valuable. You know? It'd be valuable to people as a document of somebody's life. Well. And, and how to leave it. We'll see. We'll see what I can write. You know, uh, what amazed me uh, in the it, first. By the way, if people. If people let, me just, let me just say this: if people haven't read her, uh, it, it's it's timegoesby.net. Okay, she's a phenomenal writer, and I say that as somebody who doesn't do much reading. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh! After the first two pieces that I wrote, it was just a outpouring of people a lot of names i recognize from people who comment frequently but many more names of people who've never commented and among all of that the number of people who have either survived cancer or are currently going through treatment or uh have have survived treatment and are living without cancer and i know that they're living the same way i did for most of the last year up until now of dreading next time you have to go take the test to see if there's if the cancer has come back when it, as it gets closer to that date for that scan you get i anyway get quieter and more worried and uh up until now it you know i came out feeling great different this time but an amazing number of people have not only cancer but the other diseases of age too that can be very debilitating and um one of the things i found out that fascinates me is that of, uh, just in America, this isn't the world, that whatever, however they did the research on this, 40% of Americans will be diagnosed with some form of cancer before they die. And think about what that means if it's 40%. Now we're including skin cancer and things like that. Any kind of yeah, cancer. We're yeah. talking about cancer. And that people do die of skin cancer even right. if you don't think so. And... Um, but what's amazing about that number, 40%, is that that pretty much means that every person in America has been or will be touched by cancer, if not for themselves, their husbands, their wives, their children, their grandparents, somebody, good friends, mm -hmm. somebody near them, they are going to deal with cancer. It is 100% of us deal with it in some manner. Pretty amazing. That it's, well, I'm, I'm, deal and, I'm dealing with it right now. Yes, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, and um, and, and, and so by the so by the way, disease. so by the way, is this audience right now? 
you know, because they've been watching you over these many months, a year or so. And and uh, I'm sure they've been come, that long? They, uh, I don't know when we started doing uh, and, and gotten to know you, you know, gotten to care about you. And so they're being affected by it. Sure. You know, so, I mean, and think about that in every. Thanks a lot. We really every... well, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, I don't. We'll see what happens. I'll try to write. I'll try to be honest. You've talked about something, and I, I don't know if it's premature to bring it up, uh, but you, you talked about, to me, about the fact that in your state you do have the ability to decide when you're... It, well, I, don't, it, I don't know. I, there, none of those phrases. I don't like, you know, there's, it's called a death with dignity law. Yeah, oh, I see, yeah. And a compassionate something or another yeah. law. And suicide... I'm not happy with any of those those ways of, you know, quick, short description. But the point is, I took care of my mother when she was dying of cancer. I didn't do the major caregiving, but I was spent some time with my father when he died of cancer. Obviously, I come by this honestly from my family. Uh, didn't, but, you, didn't you move to Sacramento for a time in order to yes, take care of I your did mother? Yes, four months yeah. to yeah. take care of my mother. And that was back in 92 when she died. But... Um, uh, I've seen what happens, you know, and it, uh, after I, after, when, when symptoms start appearing, it's never going to get better. It's only going to get worse. And when I talked to the oncology nurse last week, and I brought up that law here, which there are really only two requirements in Oregon. A doctor has to certify that you have less than six months to live, and, um, and you are lucid enough to sign the papers and understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, and I certainly will do that. <laughs> Reserving the right to change my mind, but I can't imagine why I would. And when I talked to the oncology nurse about that down the line, I said, you know, what I want to know is, how do you know when is the right time? Now it's time. She said in her experience, and this is a woman, 60, maybe early 60s, yeah. she's been doing this all her life, she said, people know when the time has come. So I'm relying on that. She's got a lot more experience than I do. Well, you know, I, I you know, it, it, for me it would be a difficult thing to do, but I suppose if you get to the point where you're in a certain amount of pain that you know is not going to mitigate itself, that it's not going to get better, uh, I think that's the time you probably then go, sounds like a good idea, yeah. you know. But let's not think about that right now. Let's let's. Well, think, I have to. Let, I have to decide. Or, or something well, you, that will come you, up. You don't have to decide it. You don't have to decide it today. You don't have to decide anything. All you well, have to decide about is. A lot of time is, thinking about it goes into the decision, you know. And uh, I'll discuss it more with the palliative care people and with the nurse and doctors and stuff. Well, here here's my suggestion to you, among other things, uh, in the in the next well couple of years that you have here. I, do we? I don't. Yeah. I, Time I, is I, not, listen, not, I'm hoping I'm hoping, you know, uh, um, that, you know, that you outlive me. OK, uh, mm -hmm. but that doesn't look like it's going to happen that way. But the point I'm making is, is that, uh, uh, you know, you, you can do a lot of things that are really positive in your life, like max out your credit cards. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. I mean, do you um, have anybody who's going to have to pay them off when once you're gone? Uh, yes, there is, and so it, it's not possible. Huh. But I stopped because I've been very diligent for six or seven years about my exercises five days a week. As soon as they told me, I quit. That's it. Done with that. I hate exercising. I, so I do I'm too. Done with that. I do too. Um, and somebody mentioned on my blog that um, I will be, I will probably be relieved to say, seeing whatever the end game of the Trump era is. And actually, I've been saying since two, uh, 2015. Your first thought to I me. I will be very, listen to me, I will be very pissed if I die before we see the end of the Trump administration. So I am pissed you have already. A, well, you have a reason to live. Uh, yeah, we could look at it. That no, way. The, it was funny because about the second or third thing you said to me when you first told me this was, you know, I won't be here to see how the Trump thing resolves itself. Yeah. You know, 
Um, I mean, everything comes to, it may not feel like it right now, but eventually everything comes to an end. I want to know how it happens with Trump. And I won't be here probably. Well, uh, listen, Damn. <laughs> well, listen, we'll hold a seance and get the word to you. Okay. Uh, okay. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> I like that we can laugh about this. You know, what else? you know, the thing is, if you feel good, you're doing things you enjoy, um, you know, oh, by the way, I can go back to eating all the foods I like because I got to keep my weight up. So all the things that are bad for me, but that I like a lot, <laughs> and, um, you know, until it starts to be painful and still it's until it starts to do what it's going to do to me. Yeah. I don't see what, what else am I going to do but go on living the way I want to live. Well, there's no, of course, I have to do that. There's no question about that, you know, and uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I uh, if anything I can do to keep your spirits up, you know, and and and, and, and do the right thing. The, the, as I say, the hardest thing for me is to know what is the right thing to do. So I just go with my gut, you know. Well, you know, I mean, what could you do wrong? Uh or anybody. Oh, I mean, using oh. you as standing. Oh, for I could anybody. stop calling you because I don't want to yeah, deal with that. it. Because oh. I don't want to deal with it. Because people are afraid of dealing with something like this, you know. And mm -hmm. you may find that some people you know kind of back off because of the nature of the thing, and others will. People you didn't never expected will be there for you. So, right. it, and you can't blame the ones who back off because some people. It's like I told people. Some people said, "Oh, so and so never came to my mother's funeral." I said, don't blame them. You know, they don't want to go to a funeral. They don't want to, you know, that's something that they, they it's, you can't hold it against them. You yeah. know, you're, you're, you're sliding into something that's really important for us to know and think about is that all of our younger lives, this seems to me when particularly really, really young in my 20s and maybe 30s, or maybe it was the time, the era, I don't know. People always made wonderful, I remember us making lots and lots of jokes about being dead someday or dying and that we were terribly brave about it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we really understood it was real. I mean, when you're 20, you just don't, you don't believe that, I, I, have, I believe for years and years and years that you were going to die and everybody else, but I'm the one immortal. Oh, well, this whole and, thing about, 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 about uh, she was so brave, she was so brave. Well, I, I want people to say he was screaming like a little girl, you know, <laughs> because I wouldn't put up with it that easily. I'm not, I, you're doing better than I would be doing right now if I'd found out. Listen, it's, it's barely, the information is barely a week old, a, a week and a day. Mm. I have a, you know, I, I think that they don't know for sure, but they told me that if the chemotherapy isn't too rough on me, um, that it can slow the growth of the tumors enough that I might have six to eight months of, healthy life what mm -hmm. you know before symptoms start to kick in mm -hmm. and um uh so i forgot where i was going with that thought um it's it, it's not it's back to not quite real yeah yeah that if you how can you feel this good and be given a death sentence i don't you know you, you I, don't I haven't understand. captured that for myself yet that makes no sense at all Hey, listen, we've run out of time. I hate to say that now. Uh, <laughs> Funny, yes. <laughs> Save that. Well, so Ronnie, you your time's wait, up. Your time's the up. The podcast after I die. Oh. Keep that in the back of your head. <laughs> we've run out of time. We, uh, Maybe that's my epitaph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, mine's going to be, I told you I was sick. You know, yes, so. of course it is. <laughs> Uh, love you, Ronnie, and I, I you know, I, and uh, let's keep doing this, you know. Okay. Sure. Really good, ladies and gentlemen. Ronnie Bennett, she's dying. Is that a, is that proper for me to say? <laughs> but then again, aren't we? All? I don't know. Let's just experiment. You know, <laughs> okay. see what happens. It's a work in progress here, folks. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs>